Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday. It is the Earth Master here, about 11.31 a.m. California time, June 23rd, 2024. Latest activity here on the globe shows a 3.0 here across the area of the Philippines. We'll check out the earthquake activity here in just a little bit. Uh, I want to cover space weather activity here first, where we did see a near X flare from a sunspot here on the uh, southeastern limb of the sun. This is from AR3723 with an M9.3 coming in earlier today. Now, of course, this area was the former sunspot 3697 and originally 3664. So it does look like uh, this area here has been renamed to 3723 and it's welcoming or at least coming back around this the, the uh, sun there the earth facing side of the sun for the third time it's always doing these welcome and departing shots here of very strong flares so this just telling me right here that uh, i think we're going to have to keep an eye on this sunspot as it uh, ventures further into the earth directed view no cme was associated with that impulsive near x flare this morning so we'll definitely continue to keep an eye on 3723. Now that's what Kevin says is going to be the uh, name of that sunspot. Doesn't look like they've updated it yet on the map. But uh, 3723 going to be this area right over here. Still looks fairly complex. I can't believe it's holding together for so long. Third time around the sun here. And of course this is the originally the uh, sunspot that produced many X flares last month and the historic aurora events down to some very low latitudes including here in northern california where i got to see the auroras for the very first time in my life it's pretty awesome so we'll see what this sunspot has in store for us uh, right now that appears to be the only one of major interest on the uh, earth facing side these over here this region there's a couple about three regions way out in the western limb they continue to strengthen and grow but as you can see they are out of sight out of mind we'll keep an eye here on newly named 3723 not a not a new sunspot by any means but uh definitely got a new number there and uh goodness 3723 uh right now kevin has this as a beta structure magnetic structure hard to tell though we'll have to look at this a little bit later uh see how complex it is once we get more of a of a uh a discrete view out here right now it's just it's kind of hard to tell but overall threat uh still somewhat elevated 15 percent chance for x flare m flare at 60 and c flare at 99 percent chance or so and uh, no major roars in the forecast no cmes have been produced at least in the earth directed view so uh, and there it is that flare that kicked up almost an x flare as you can see uh m 9.3 right up there so definitely a, a sunspot to watch here in the coming days as it rotates further into the earth directed view all right, earthquake activity. Anything major going on since last night's six-pointer, which a, uh, it looks like it's remaining steady is a 6.0. Venezuela area over here around the Trinidad and Tobago area. Quite a few folks here reporting that earthquake. I appreciate all the comments there on the last video. Uh, any newer movement, let's see if anything's really kicked up here since then. Um, we would expect the Puerto Rico area to really ramp up potentially following this movement down here. Um, and the reasoning is because the Caribbean plate here is under a lot of strain and always getting squeezed here between the South American plate that's got a full force up here. Arrows pointing to the north, right? And then you got the um, uh, the Middle America trench over here, the Cocos plate kind of making that subduction zone there. Uh, as you can see on the Middle America trench area. And the North American plate up here just kind of moving off towards the west, northwestward. But uh, it gets squeezed and pulled and tugged. And, you know, there's a lot that goes on here around this little Caribbean plate. And it's due to the activity that takes place all around it. Uh, it doesn't look like we've seen anything super elevated up here following that earthquake activity. Just some threes. And this is um, it has been fairly common out here. I'm not seeing anything um, elevated. 
Uh, we did see some activity last night. Um, let's see here. Well, this is this morning here. There was a newer quake uh, into the northern end of the Middle America Trench. Maybe just here on the uh, plate boundary, just off the uh, trench zone for a 5.2. So things still look like they could be um, getting a little bit active out here across this area. We'll keep an eye on it. I'm, again, I'm not seeing any major intense noticeable uptick following this movement last night for now. Uh, Oklahoma area, Texas, still seeing some activity out in the oil fields. There in California, got a handful of smaller quakes here. Watching this area because, you know, this is a, a prime area to watch here because you got the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. And a lot of times we do see some swarming out here. Right now, just a handful of smaller quakes off the Brawley Seismic Zone and the southern end of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Keep an eye there on SoCal, Southern California area. Uh, up along the creeping segment here of the San Andreas Fault, a handful of smaller quakes up there. Really nothing major going on. Northern California did have an earthquake up here last night. Um, outside of Willows, in between Chico and Willows here, kind of close to where I live. Um, 2.8, 24 kilometers deep. Still got a little bit of activity here across the uh, coast range. This is where the <clears throat> that four-pointer struck here. There's a little bit of swarming going on here. Let me bring back the last couple days and see what we got. Uh, this all started off with a 4.3 on the 21st, so a couple days ago. Still seeing some movement overnight with a 3.6 being the largest there in this uh, activity overnight. Crazy to think that a 4.3 would create... Uh, well, I mean, there's not a lot of aftershock activity, but still, um, got to watch it. These could be potentially, you never know, four shocks to something bigger there on the Makama Fault, which is a pretty lengthy fault system that runs, uh, as you can see, all the way down here, uh, close into the Bay Area, and capable of producing a sizable earthquake. It's been quite a while since we've seen any major activity out here, of course, been quite a while since we've seen a major activity on numerous faults and plate boundaries out here. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that with that little bit of uh, swarming going on at the northern end of that fault, which runs into, well, the San or the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Little earthquake here on the Gorda plate from late last night, 2.6. Nothing showing up here in terms of earthquake activity across the Cascadia. Let me check the trimmer map here from last night. Uh, wasn't a big deal, at least far as nor the southern end, but in, tally in total tally, we got 458 epicenters. That's still up there in terms of the trimmer count. And so that puts us, I'm sure, above 12,000 epicenters in the last 30 days. 12,488. That's a decent amount if you really think about it. It's been consistent here over the last 30 days. And it's still going. If you look at the all data here, we've been quiet pretty much uh, the majority of 2023. We've seen a couple upticks in trimmer, but this is going up. Um, starting to look like a little bit like what it did back in October of 2022. So pretty decent uptick in trimmer activity uh, taking place right now. And of course, we'll continue to watch that because... You know, I've been seeing, obviously, a lot of trimmer down here and uh, some subsequent earthquake activity and strain, uh, the, these little signals of strain, why these uh, these little small earthquakes pop up following any large trimmer event, you know, up towards the locked area of the Cascadia. Just little clues, right? Little clues as to how much strain's building up out there. Uh, the Mount St. Helens area, a couple smaller earthquakes out here, including a 2.1. This one's away from the... Mount St. Helens area just to the northwest there. Fairly deep as well, about 16 kilometers deep for that quake last night. And uh, let's see what we got. Yellowstone National Park. Zoom in here real quick. See if there's anything suspicious. It doesn't look like it. There's the six-pointer signature there from uh, the Venezuela area late last night. Showed up pretty nicely there across various stations. That is not a local signature whatsoever but a distant 
signature. Now there is a local earthquake. I could see it showing up right here, it looks like, and maybe right here, two of them. Um, <clears throat> let me see. There's a 2.5. That's got to be the 2.5 in Montana showing up up here. Also a two-pointer in the Idaho area. So we do see those showing up. There's a 2.5 and a little bit later, we got the uh, Idaho earthquake showing up here and mainly across this area of the park. And that's because it's closer in proximity to those earthquakes in Montana and over here in Idaho. But far as any uh, activity goes, this is wind. Wind, W-I-N-D is the key. And that does show up um, quite nicely on these graphs here. I'm just gonna bring this up real quick, show you guys with the verified data, okay? This is wind in Yellowstone National Park. We're talking about gusts of uh, over 40 miles per hour, some maybe locally higher across uh, various peaks out here. And well, that's what we see. It shows up uh, quite often in the summertime when we get those thunderstorms and whatnot or any type of large wind events. And uh, as you can see, it's showing up on the majority of these today. All right, back to the earthquake activity here. Let's see what we got going on out in Hawaii. Still got uh, a little bit of movement out there around the Kilauea volcano. A deep earthquake here, 28 kilometers. I wonder if that's correct. Not. See, that's underneath automatic status, so that has not been reviews, reviewed. It'll probably get revised here because the majority of earthquake activity has been very shallow here on the southern edge and the upper east rift zone here. Um, not a huge increase, but a, a lot of those are from yesterday, actually. Let's go check out the USGS Volcanoes website here. Cascades across Sierra Nevada and down to Southern California. Yes, there's volcanoes in Southern California. We're all green for now. Kilauea Volcano. The uh, volcano of interest here on the big island is, uh, I want to check out the deformation data, see what's going on here. Still going up. 623. Ste it's pretty much steady as she goes there. Look at that. The graph is, you know, it's, it's taking us up. Here's that little eruption that happened back early June. Small amount of uh, magma broke through the surface there to create a 10 hour long eruption on the southwest rift zone but a little bit of volume loss but since then we're going up and up and up and we're way up so anytime now you know i keep saying that but you really can't forecast these you can look for little signs this area can only handle so much pressure right before something breaks through that's why we've seen that uh, uh that fracture zone out here it relieved a little bit of strain but also i think it created a band-aid effect it solidified the area patched it up that was a weak area out here and now we're just building some uh, quite a bit of strain out here in this zone uh, while the inflation's going up here. So we've got to watch this. Um, I don't think it's going to go up towards the crater area. I, I'm leaning more towards down here across the upper east rift zone. Been following these earthquakes here a little bit. Uh, so we'll watch that. Definitely keep an eye on it. Uh, let's see up here in the Russia area. After midnight, a 5.2, Kuril Kamachaka, 131 kilometers deep here in that major subduction zone. A couple of smaller earthquakes here in Japan as well. Not that big of a deal. This earthquake, this activity is uh, you know, very common. If you look at the last 30 days of earthquake activity out here, uh, I would say fours and fives are actually quite common out here. It's a major subduction zone, and the slip rate is quite high out here. So a five-pointer is not that much of a surprise to the folks there in Japan. Obviously that is the area that's seen that 2011 mega quake, that nine pointer, but uh, you know, I don't think we're gonna see anything like that anytime soon here across this area. Uh, up here along this region, potentially. Uh, that uh, is a region that really hasn't seen any mega thrust activity in a while. And it's very capable of producing large earthquakes out here along this subduction zone. <clears throat> Uh, Taiwan did see a 5.1 early this morning. Really no swarming going on, but it is in that area that did see some incredible swarming here over the last couple months, including that larger 7 uh, a couple months ago. So still a little bit of activity stirring up there. As uh, far as the earthquake 3D globe goes here, uh, the quiet zones today look to be New Zealand area, Tonga, and the Fiji region. So uh, eventually this will fill back in in a 
in a uh, more than likely we'll see deeper earthquake activity out here first but yeah i mean it's pretty cluttered out here across the philippines and uh, taiwan southward here today a little bit of broadening out across the java trench in papua new guinea i got some movement up in china as well a couple fours the mediterranean area some twos including an older four out there as well around the crete area it looks like and some uh, movement up north uh, into that area i heard now there's a middle america trench definitely uh that's some increasing activity out there it looks like for sure um i heard the ison eruption is over is it true well let's go check it out and see what's up see if they put out a uh, update yet or not uh this was put out put up like this was put out yesterday <laughs> <laughs> not Monday it's Sunday can't be in that yet can't be doing that all right so it looks as though they're announcing that the eruption is over the eruption that started on the 29th seems to be over yesterday there was little activity in the crater and this afternoon there was no activity when the civil defense flew a drone to check it out uh, so obviously you know a lot of people wondering well why is there still lava flowing up uh, in certain areas away from this area well the lava has found tubes and these little channels underneath various older deposited lava fields here and that's why we're seeing you know um, areas such as such as uh, the area north east of the Savart Singhi area remember where that barrier that uh, protective barrier had a breach in it from the lava so a lot of times that lava flows under there and then finds its way up through the older lava field and, you know, creates a surprise little breach there in certain regions. And, uh, that, you know, it, it can stay hot for quite a while underneath there as it travels underneath the surface or just below the subsurface here and uh, finds its way to, um, you know, various areas. But it, it does look like the uh, eruption is over, according to these guys. Let me check out the live from Iceland site see what we got and then we'll look at some GPS um, information <clears throat> there's the folks hard at work um, you know protecting the infrastructure out there it's a smart singing power plant and also the Blue Lagoon I don't see any visible signs here on this one of any lava still got a little active hot spot over here here's the uh, region that they're building up there's uh, the Savart Singhi power plant area, portion of it. See all the pipes and whatnot used in the hydrothermal operations. Pretty close, but uh, I think they're. I, th I think they got it. This should slow down, solidify, cool. You know, cool down, and uh, that's a close call. But uh, it does look like they're you know keeping things blocked off there. I've uh, been working 24/7 out there. Um, trying to protect the uh, infrastructure and this is just barely uh, the site of that Savart Singhi power plant all right uh, let's I want to check out the GPS statements out here at least the vertical displacement that may be going on which tells me and tells everyone whether it's inflating or not out here across the area and here is the station around Grindavik here uh, there's the eruption that happened back there in May. Huge drop, right? Obviously, that's going to make sense because the, the magma has now broke through to the surface and depleted the area below. But we're, we're going up a little bit, but really not all that much here. So hard to say unless we get some further activity out here across um, the area of the rift zones. Uh, we could see a little pause out here in terms of the next eruption because it's not quite going up to uh, a level that would be concerning but we'll continue to watch that for now but uh, yeah looks like it's officially over all right uh, what else we got out here folks um asteroids <laughs> fortunately um we don't have an asteroid that is um gonna come anywhere near us but there is a giant one look at this one right here folks that's a little scary fortunately 
it's over four million miles away from us so we don't have to worry about it but that is a huge asteroid 7,200 feet so that equals a 1.364 mile wide asteroid coming within four million miles of the earth and something like that if that were to hit, well, let's give it a little comparison here. If you remember back in 1908, the uh, the Tunguska, is that what it's called, in Russia? Remember that where it flattened all the uh, forests out there? I remember reading about that in school. Uh, well, that was an estimated 50 to 60, meter, meter, uh, 50 to 60 meters wide. Uh, and this one right here in meters is 2,195. So... That little one that uh, kicked up there in 1908, um, that explosion itself flattened 80 million trees and over 830 square miles. So, you know, the dinosaur killing asteroid, that was estimated to be, I think, uh, six miles or so in diameter. Either way, you know, it's we want to keep those big ones away from the uh, planet for sure uh, according to nasa uh, asteroids with diameters of at least 3330 feet which is you know half of this size uh, are estimated to hit the planet around once every 700,000 years and then the large asteroids there the three mile wide uh, or larger catastrophic ones there that killed the uh, the uh, dinosaurs are predicted to occur just once every 30 million years. So even something like this, it would be devastating, big time. <clears throat> it could definitely have um, some global consequences there. So that's a pretty big asteroid. But we did um, look at that here on the asteroid chart. That's going to be 2011 UL21 right here. Pretty decent sized asteroid. But when we put it into motion here, it's clearly not interception, uh, not anywhere close to interception of the Earth and at a safe distance there um you know but we got not only that one but there's hundreds and thousands of other asteroids out here that uh we got to watch out for as well you know i think we've you know you know it's we've been pretty fortunate and lucky right to not uh get uh hit by one of these that's a bridge size a bridge size asteroid that is crazy. All right, so a couple smaller ones here coming up. It looks like uh, the 23rd, 25th, there's a 1 million mile approach. I really don't go into extreme detailed study of these unless we come within about, oh, I don't know. There was one a couple months ago here that came in within about, uh, I think it was 11,000 miles, if I remember right. And that was a close one, but it missed us. So, I mean, anything under like 50,000 miles, I'm definitely going to do more of a study on it and see, uh, you know, look at its statistics and the, its path and whatnot. But we're safe. We're definitely safe here for now. Uh, let's see what else is there. That fire out here just outside of me, uh, down there in Calusa County, the Sites Fire, the one that I was live streaming here, a couple days ago is at 19,195 acres, right? Let me refresh that. Yep. Uh, latest update was put out, looks like, yesterday, almost 24 hours ago. So it doesn't look like anything has changed. 38% uh, 38 containment. It's hot out here, but we really don't have any winds, which is good uh, to keep that fire from spreading. And that still looks to be about the only major fire out here. you got the Watts fire down here outside of uh, Fresno area, 30% containment. Uh, no major fires out here for now, uh, which is good. want to keep that down. Oregon's got uh, a few fires out there, it looks like, in the heavily forested areas. Um, yeah, so hopefully we get these under control. I do not want a bad fire season, not at all. Uh, weather outlook here today got an enhanced severe weather risk up here in the northeast. I didn't know these guys got that uh, type of weather up there, but I guess they do. 10% chance for some tornado activity up there around the uh, Massachusetts area, New Hampshire. Yeah, those areas up there looking potentially 
uh, like it could be a severe, a big time severe weather day. Wind, not so much a hail threats up there, but uh, tornado and wind. If you're out there in those regions today, stay on guard. Uh, for tomorrow's outlook, got a slight risk here. Back across the area around the Great Lakes region, tornado, wind, and potential hell out there for the start of the work week tomorrow. Goodness. All right, far as uh, any tropical development out here in the Gulf of Mexico, we'll put this into motion here and see what we got. Um, really not seeing anything of organized... Maybe down south here, it looks like a little bit something spinning down there. But, uh, you know, that's good. These models aren't trending to anything yet. With that high pressure right there, it should keep that most of the uh, anything that does develop over here across the Caribbean south. Uh, pull this up here real quick. I don't really see anything spinning out there in the uh, Pacific either, so that's good. Uh, it, it's just going to be hot. It's just going to be hot out here in California. I don't have any cool down in the forecast, I don't think. June 20th, June 23rd, there we go. High pressure is going to be in the orange. A little bit of cool down, it looks like, to right there on the 27th. That's here in a few days. But high pressure builds back in here across the West Coast, Eastern Pacific. Eh, I'm ready for winter already. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Bring on the cooler temperatures and rain. I'm just, the heat's exhausting. It's a little bit too much at times. I mean, you can only jump in the pool so much, and even then it's, I don't know. I like to be able to go outside and enjoy a cool breeze, not 110, you know, and that's just, you know, where do I live that it's 110? Well, Look up the Sacramento Valley in Northern California. It's pretty much a death valley out here, if you think about it. We're surrounded by mountains, but on a larger scale. And uh, we cook. San Joaquin Valley, Sacramento Valley, we cook out here. Unless we get a strong delta wind here. But most of the time, that's limited to the Bay Area and the delta. And we just we cook out here. It's, it gets hot. Pretty much a secondary death valley out here. All right, folks, have a good day. Um, seismograph stations out here look quiet for now. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll catch you guys back out here for the Sunday night update. Take care.